Hello, this is BioEnchanted, and welcome back to Soul Blazer. This is a particularly neat level, for a variety of reasons. So let's get into it, shall we? Yeah. We finally caught up with Dr. Leo. And the Zansetsu sword, as you may have guessed from that dialogue, actually kills metal enemies with finally getting that sword, the metal sword. Yes. It's right there in that chest, but we can't get it yet. We need to find the great door first. The second major thing about this dungeon that I really like, besides the fact that we're now finally at Leo's house, is uh, it's got new music. Really interesting music too. Reminds me a lot of Devil's Lab from Final Fantasy VI, which is probably my favourite music in that particular game. I mean, it's not quite as catchy as Devil's Lab, but it's, it's different too with every other music in the game, so I'm fine with it. Well, it's sort of, uh, sort of bass line coming up here as well, it's a really uh, fun song. And now we've actually unlocked the way to that chest, so let's just quickly run back and grab it, shall we? Some doors don't speak, most doors don't speak. That first one did, but this one doesn't. But now we finally have Zansetsu's sword, we can kill metal enemies. Oh, a weird thing. Those grey monkeys actually, from the uh, third level, actually count as metal. Weird. I wouldn't have thought so, but yeah. They're not ghosts, so I guess metal's the only thing could let me left, really. These white guys can be a little annoying because of their hitbox, because they jump at you, and when they jump, their hitbox is way higher than it seems like it would be in a 3D game. Because, of course, the sprite ends up going up a little bit rather than uh, the usual way. And there are some enemies in this area that are kind of annoying to deal with, uh, but some of them you can kind of get a good sort of thing going with them. And because we can kill almost all of them with our swords, we get quite a few gems here, which we'll need. But not nearly as much, happily. I think I quite like with it, as you unlock stuff in a particular level as well, as you restore parts of the uh, lab, it actually becomes more and more complete visually. Like, this, these holes will always be here, here. But for the most part, there's a lot of places where you'll be able to, uh, uh, like, complete parts of the floor, because now something's there that wasn't there before, that kind of thing. A lot of the holes still stay there, but... You know. Also the visual thing, if you look below us, you'll actually see the exact layout of the next floor. Every floor in Sundra does that, it allows you to see the floor below it, because we're just on rafters right now. That's a really cool visual and I really like that, and it also gives you a bit of a hint on what you'll be doing in the next level as well. So the next floor of this area, for example, will have plain floor things for the ice to play with. Kind of trapped between a hard place and annoying place there, aren't we? I also quite like how big this particular building is before you fill it with furniture, and it's just as we fill it with furniture, it becomes a lot uh, more cozy and a lot more like an actual place. Of course, there's a lot of uh, pads here that just make more pads happen. They have more monster layers, I mean, they just make more monster layers. Like, there's one coming up. Well, it'll just be a big string of monster layers, but it's experience. So let's go do all with it, shall we? Got a lot of cats in this area. This is also going to be the area where we come across the very last one of Leo's friends as well. We've already met uh, all the other characters mentioned by Lisa. We have met Known the Snail, we've met Turbo the Dark, uh, Dolphin, 
do I think his name was? I believe that's all of them for now. But there's one here that we'll meet as well, much later on, like, end of the level character, of course, because you're always on this level, aren't they? These guys are annoying. These guys you have to just kind of, like, hope that it'll come straight into you, because otherwise, if they get away from you, catching up with them can be really annoying, because they tend to just follow the exact edge of an area. And some areas are very circuitous, so some of them have a lot of edge, so you just have to wait a long time, or just try to find them. Like here, for example, a lot of them just got past us there. So that's going to make finding them again really annoying, because they're all over this big circuitous area, which has a lot of, like, winds. I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of edges we could potentially go on. And of course, here, all this is doing is respawning them all now, because we've faded out, because of the way the monster lairs work. Now they're ill with store, or the monster lairs to full health. Now we just need to kill all of them, and hope we can do it before they escape. One, two, three. Oh, you bastard. We escaped. That's always annoying when one of them slips by, because you never quite know what the route is going to be that they take, because you always take the one that the longest routes to take. And then when you go off screen, it can be a real pain to find them again. These are the worst enemy types in this dungeon. They're easy. They're just so annoying. As you can see, they just follow the exact edge, so there can just be so much to deal with here. So much edge. Done with the edge. You just need to kind of wait until they loop all the way back around the entire area and start coming down your way again. Because if you start trying to chase them down like I'm doing, They'll just go past you and you'll just miss them. They're a huge nightmare to fight, these guys. Now this has made more of an edge from Apollo as well. It's just a huge pain. Really don't like these guys. Here we go. One. I've still got a monster there that's not uh, finished yet, we still haven't found the last guy yet. There's a new guy. And that was the last guy behind me, I think. He just flew back past me because he did butt. But now he'll be going over here too. There we go, finally. We can deal with the rest of these. I quite like that the walls, like, you just can't get into certain rooms unless you unlock the door because the walls are just solid. It's not just like that the doors are removed from their frames. The frames themselves don't exist. It's not just like, oh, the uh, monsters have just kind of ripped all the things out and put them in boxes. It like, it's like it removed their existence. Like, the doors never were there, it was just a blank wall until the doors freed from its hiding place. Which I find quite interesting. And that chest of drawers is also quite interesting. Next level down, we can see now. And of course, this is the last floor of this particular area as well, because you can kind of tell that because it's just blank down there, you can't see any more floor underneath us. So we've reached the bottom of this section of dungeon. getting quite a lot of magic things as well, where we were probably running really low on it, now we have a fairly decent amount. Now of course we have a load of fire to get past, so let's equip a slightly weaker armor, but one that's useful to us right now. This is kind of dangerous though, because of course it means the enemies will do a lot more damage to us than they otherwise would be. So let's just kind of deal with this as best we can. So the best thing is, of course, Pressing these monster layers down here actually opens shortcuts so you don't need to go across the fire anymore. I don't use them as such, because I'm an idiot, but that's what they're for. They're basically so that you don't have to switch armor to get past the fire, you can just follow the route that actually doesn't have fire anymore. These little side routes. Here we go. That's like a full pack now we can get around without having to go through the fire. 
this area is going to have, again, some really annoying enemy placements. A mouse in a room full of cats. Not a good sign. These guys, these guys suck. Because they spawn miles away from where you are. So you just need to kind of... Because of course they go all the way around that security area with all of the flames. Over up here, look. It's going to take forever for them to come back down again. And it look like they end up in this area. And of course, as well, they kind of... They didn't spawn. Now they're spawning. And I missed that guy, so it's just, oh, it's just a nightmare to deal with these guys. They're the worst. These little guys are just the worst. And of course you can't use magic on them, because they're metal enemies. From what I recall, and the most metal enemies you can't use magic on. Because otherwise you could sequence break. I don't know if we'll these counter attack metal enemies, though. They might do. A lot of them. Because, of course, this dungeon is designed so that you can at least go a few enemies without getting Zantetsu's sword. There we go, that's better. So this might be something you don't need Zansetsu sword to kill, but Zansetsu sword to kill rather. So this is generally our strongest weapon right now. I quite like these little, like, uh, boulders and things, they're really cute. Like little fly boulders and bees. Spiky little things too. A little shortcut? Of course, this is, this is a laboratory. We'll work out. We'll find out what it's used for shortly. I just quite like what we were seeing as well. We were seeing the floor as it exists when you've released the whole thing. When we were looking at it from above, this was the area where we were seeing from above us before. This is the exact layout. And I really like the way it was doing that from the previous floor. That's a really clever visual thing. The fact that you can see all of the laboratory beneath the other parts of it, including from the actual lab itself, from the top floor, before you even get into the dungeons, you can see the first floor of the dungeon beneath the actual lab, and I really like... I always really like that kind of aesthetic. I really dig that, it's really cool. It's visually engaging, and it gives a good sense of progression as well. It's almost like Dark souls -y kind of a thing. Let's have a catch go upstairs too. Have we have steps? Yep, now we actually have multiple floors to it. Now we can actually explore the next one. Once we've finished with this. We've got relatively easy to deal with speedy enemies because they just come around here, and this is generally an easy place to tell whether it's kind of a nice little track. So you can just stand here and just let them spawn and pull right into your sword pretty much. This is the easiest place to take care of these guys. Great, but it's certainly very nice to Back to the armor. I find this kind of a pain in the bum having to swap to weaker armor so that you can get past hazards and stuff. I mean, it's an interesting way of making the armor useful, but it's just a pain to actually have to, like, do it. I probably just like helicopters, though, they're pretty cool. You the last two ones to wear. This is one of my favourite aspects of this particular dungeon. We have just seen the second stage of the, of course, of this dungeon. This is the first and third, this basement area. But for now, 
We have a model town to play with, too. But first, let's just find out what we've unlocked, shall we? Let's talk to everything we've just restored. Yep. Good to know. I think we'll have to do that shortly. By shortly, I mean in a couple of sections of dungeon. It's going to be towards the end of this level. The key's not going to be long, though. Of course, in the first two areas, I have actually missed a couple of items. Uh, of course, they're the massive emblems. Uh, some of them I can't get because I couldn't do them without restoring, returning to those dungeons, but some of them I just kind of missed. But then again, they are kind of stupid places. You'll see them when I go back for them in a much later video. Because after the dungeon, after this one, I'm going to start going back to all of those and grabbing all the stuff. This is not going to be an appropriate time. Yeah, his daughter's being held under duress unless he builds this machine that this lab basically is. This entire lab is the machine that he's been contracted to build. On pain of his daughter's life. Looks like the wing key, actually, from, uh... Is exactly like the wing key from the, uh... The moustache key, I mean. Uh, from, uh, the very first, uh... Dark Cloud. Apparently, we can use it to get in here. This soldier's not very talkative, though. So let's see what's in here, shall we? Ooh! New armor! Nice. So, uh, the next part of the dungeon, of course, will be going into that model town we saw. But it's quite a chunk that part, so we'll be doing that next time, of course. So, as we make our way there, it's fairly empty right now, second floor of the house. I uh, hope you'll join me next time for the model village. Goodbye.